Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Back with, yes, the 20 watt Class A amp. I know some of you guys might not be interested, might be getting bored of this, but today we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're going to pick out a transformer. And to do that, we need no, like, say for instance, this is a 160 VA. And this guy here is the 250 VA, okay? Uh, they're both capable of the current, you know, five amps per rail on this guy. This guy is three and a half amps, so easy to can handle it. This is 22 volts RMS, uh, 25 volts RMS. That's rated at 115. Power in the U.S. is really about 120, so it's a little bit higher than than that. Well, we got to I think the uh, either one of these might work. We're gonna have some capacitors too. And I've got a, a few capacitors to choose from, some 10 millifarads, 6.8 millifarads, uh, some other values. So, how do we decide? Well, we can do some math, decide that way. And there's some other things just that we can just discuss and talk about. Using a lap power supply is a great way to test an amplifier in the beginning. So you take away all the power supply effects and you can isolate it because you got a known DC voltage well what we're gonna do today I'm gonna show you the voltage what I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna be showing you the screen we're gonna come over here and look at this boy this seems toasty uh, and right now I have the bias current set right around uh, just under a half an amp okay and the distortion I can't, I can even go lower than that before I start affecting distortion. So for now, uh, to keep this thing, you know, from getting too hot, uh, now when I get in the box, we're going to, again, make those final choices. But for right now, what I can do is I can select a transformer by looking at the voltage and to see how low I can drop the voltage to see where this guy starts to clip and where distortion goes up. And then I can know whether or not which transformer I choose and how much voltage sag I can get based on the transformer and the capacitors that I use for that. So that's gonna be really interesting when I get this stuff hooked up. And today is just a quick video to see where the ballpark is, where do we gotta be, and how much voltage we're not putting out a lot of voltage here, but we need headroom. Those op amps need some headroom to operate in. And then also the transistors and the drive uh, circuitry, they have to have some headroom. And then the final output stage needs the old headroom. So there's, you know, there's a stack up of headroom. The output stage needs, say, you know, some volts, maybe a volt even. And then, you know, you just kind of go up from there. Each stage needs maybe a volt or two. So... Let's find out. Let's bring the camera over and take a look. All right, let me explain this picture. The uh, yellow channel one is the output voltage to the eight ohm load. The blue one is the current to the eight ohm load. This uh, violet one is the, that is the voltage at the positive voltage rail. It's, it's 10 volts, same as the uh, voltage that we're swinging the output voltage okay so you can see there's plenty of headroom about about 10 volts okay and then the green one at the bottom that is the current from the lab power supply now what I've done is I've dropped it to right where it starts to affect the THC just barely it's down at 29 volts and our THC is 0.04 and if I take the voltage rolls up to the maximum my power supply 31.6 is 0.04 so if I drop it down again all right so it's about 28 and a half volts where the uh, THC goes to 0.05 so you know we still have I guess the op amps the circuitry within the amplifier needs this kind of headroom where it's just barely starts to affect the THD now as I drop it, that's 0.06, and we're at 28. So 28, 28 
uh, 28 and a half volts is where we start seeing a slight effect. Now, where we drop it down, where we see the flat topping, well, you can kind of see the current flat topping. You see, it's just the top. I don't know if it's easier to see it when there's more peaks and you. Or if we zoom out and you watch the top. And if you see, watch the top, you can watch it, see it's flat, and then where does it go around? So right where it starts to affect the THC, that's what it's looking like at the top. You can just see it barely start to touch. So, kind of interesting. Again, this is the current, that's the voltage. Okay, let me try to really zoom in on this guy. And as it goes off the screen. I'll just bring that down. And bump it up again. See how far we can bring it down. Well, that's half a volt per division. Wow, okay. So that's the top of the waveform right there. That's 250 millivolts per division. That's uh, eagle eyes on it. Okay, let's take it down until we see it affect that. Right there, see that? And that's right around 30 volts. So when you really zoom in on that guy, Yeah, looks like about 30 volts. So, we uh, 30.4 volts is where I'm at. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the... Okay, so yeah, that's... This violet one is the voltage drill, right? So, right... Okay... Yeah, right around 30, I don't know. I'd say just over 30 volts. So you start dipping down close to 30 volts. It's pretty sensitive right through there. Okay, so 30 volts looks okay. I just have to go slow, I guess. Yeah, but 28, 29, you can see it. And then right, let's go down to, okay, there's 29 volts. THC is 0.04. If I take it all the way up, THC is still 0.04. I think that's such a minute change that even THD, I'll show you what 0.05 looks like. That's 0.05 right there. So, very minute change. So, it looks like, you know, I'd say around 30 volts to be safe. Uh, we'd want the voltage rails to stay above 30 volts. Plus or minus 30 volts. All right, so it looks like we need 29 volts uh, before we start affecting THD. So, we can even say 30. But anyway, right around there. And I had about yeah, about 1.4 amps per rail. So we can call that 1.5. And let me pull up my board. Let's go over some math. All right. So let me just talk about it. I got a 160 VA transformer and 250 VA transformer. Uh, if I had 1.5 amps at 30 volts minimum, then that's 45 watts times two because two rails 90 watts and two amplifiers so times two for the two amps that's 180 watts okay that's over the 160 VA VA has power factor involved so we're not getting 160 watts out of that 
So it looks like that's not gonna work, right? Because power factor means we need something bigger. But you know what? That's average power, max, I mean, that's average max power on both channels, both, you know, uh, just, that's not gonna happen. So we could say, well, yeah, you know, that's for dynamic power. So even if we could operate around half of that, which we could with the 160VA and had leftover power for dynamics, which we can store some of that in capacitors, it's like, well, you know, maybe we can get by with that 160VA. And, but then we look at 22 volts. Well, that gives, with well, square root of two gives 31 volts of the rail. So that means, you know, we only had about one volt for ripple before we start affecting, we, we dip down into that and actually maybe two volts because it's really probably closer to 29 volts. So maybe only two volts of ripple, which even that's probably doable. Put a bunch of caps in there. We're gonna have to put a bunch of caps in there anyway to kind of store some energy. So, uh, you know, so we're still looking like maybe that's possible. Now, hey, one thing I wanna go back just in case it got by you, 90 watts. We're only putting out 20 watts. <laughs> oh, well, you know what, sorry. That was 40 watts because I, uh, the one and a half amps was in the four ohms. So this is based on a four ohm providing the 40 watts. Okay. Uh, so again, worst case scenario. So I'm kind of stacking up worst case scenarios. We're not going to be at max power continuously, both channels, you know, and if we are, then it looks like it's under design, but you know, Realistically, it's not going to be. And especially if you're more around eight ohms, then you can see how 160 VA is doable. And with some capacitors to hold the voltage stiff so that it doesn't drop down 29, that looks doable too. Another thing is 22 volts is based on 115 volts and the US power's 120. So we have a little bit of leeway there as well. So this isn't, undoable i mean this is workable i think okay okay that versus a 250 va now 25 times square root of two gives us 35 volts now we got plenty of headroom right that's great so why not use that it's just bigger that's all well okay there's a drawback to that as well remember i'm pulling half an amp on each power rail so a half an amp on each rail, if I'm holding it at say 30 volts per rail, that's 60 volts rail to rail, half an amp is 30 watts times two, 60 watts. So between both channels, I'm, I'm burning 60 watts just sitting there. One channel, I'm just burning 30 watts. So if I add another five volts on top of that, on each rail, that's another 10 volts times half an amp, another, you know, five watts. You're just adding another five watts plus five watts for the other channel, that's 10 watts more in the box. Just, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but what if we can increase our bias current to run a little hotter, more into class A? Maybe, do we want that trade off? Now, when we consider all this power stuff, this is all max continuous power stuff. And I keep on trying not to say RMS power because that's a bad habit. RMS power doesn't exist, so it's average power, continuous power. So anyway, you know, we're back to quality versus uh, numbers and max powers and stuff that probably isn't realistic and isn't something that's necessary. So, you know, by thinking you're going to uh, best case scenario, uh, really, maybe it's not. You know, if we go back to this and we go, okay, well, if we are basing this around four ohms, that's one thing, but if we're basing it around eight ohms, then it gives us a lot more leeway. And if we're adding voltage, do we add voltage or do we have more capacitors and just hold the voltage stiffer, not let the ripple? All this does, we can't use it because the voltage swing is not gonna swing that high. We're getting 13 volts RMS. So, you know, we're, we're under 20 volts, right? And so anything above 20 volts, we'll, we'll say anything above 29 volts, because it looks like we need not, about nine volts at headroom before we just start barely affecting the THD. So 
if we're adding this voltage, it's not helping us with our dynamic power. It's helping us, it's relieving how many capacitors we need. Uh, but now think about that though. If it is relieving how many capacitors you need, that's because you're allowing more ripple. Well, okay, then, you know, some people are aware of that, that ripple can find its way into your audio. And if the power supply has a high power supply rejection ratio, where, or the amplifier does, where it can uh, reject the ripple from the power supply, well, then that's fine. You know, then use this, uh, smaller capacitors. So I'm I'm not work, I haven't worked it out in my own head yet. I want to I want to test both of these scenarios on the bench, but I I'm, I like this idea because it's just smaller and I can fit more caps in there. And if I'm not burning voltage, you know that extra voltage I don't need I can't use. And if I can crank up my bias a little bit higher, then I'd rather do that. So I'm kind of leaning towards doing this. So next video, we'll find out. <laughs> All right, hey, thanks patrons for supporting the channel. Thanks everybody for watching the videos. And you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, by the way. And um, hey, thanks for everybody watching. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>